Hello and welcome to Get Yourself Optimized. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, and today I'm so, so excited and grateful to have Laura Stinchfield with us. Laura is the pet psychic. She's an internationally renowned pet psychic and people medium. For decades, she's studied animal behavior and training, animal communication, telepathy, mediumship, death and dying, the afterlife, reincarnation, personal growth, meditation, and consciousness. Laura is the voice for anyone who cannot speak for themselves. Her work is a source of knowledge and comfort to people and animals around the world. She's the author of two books and a meditation CD. Her books are Voices of the Animals, a collection of insightful articles and stories that will change the way you view and treat animals, and Stormy's Words of Wisdom, an enlightened dog's profound insights on life. The meditation CD is called Pet Communication, Loss, and the Afterlife, Meditations for Connecting and Communicating with Your Animal Before and After Death. Laura, it's so great to have you on the show. Oh, it's so great to be here. Thanks for having me. So I would love for our yeah, listener to, to, this. to understand the difference in uh, regards to animal communication and animal mm -hmm. psychic uh, connection. Like, what is the difference if there is one? Mm -hmm. Because I know there are great animal communicators that just have this this way of reading an animal's body language and so forth. But you actually kind of get inside mm -hmm. of their like you connect with their souls and I think that's different. So I'd love to hear the distinction. Yeah. There, well, there's a few different things. So animal communication and pet psychics can be one in the same. And pretty much what we do is we talk to animals using telepathy. And what happens is the animals send us messages um, through their thoughts, their feelings, images in their minds, feelings in their bodies. Um, and then what happens with me is that my mind then transfers it into words. But every animal communicator or pet psychic is different. Some people might just see flashes of pictures. Some might just have a sense of knowing. Um, some might just have, might have just a feeling in their body. It doesn't mean that one is better than the other. Um, but what my mind does is transfer it really quickly into words. Right. So you're receiving essentially like vibrations and then you're able to com uh, convert that into words, maybe images as well, so that you can get a sense for what is going on inside yeah, of them? Yeah, images too, but I'll, I'll sometimes have to trust the words more than the images because what happens with my mind is I'll, if I'll get a word, sometimes my mind will create an image to my association of it. So for instance, if like an animal says to me, this is like an example that happened long ago, like they said, um, uh, like I want my, I want my favorite blanket by the window and um, I want my favorite blanket back, back in the window. And I had put blue to it, like blue blanket. And, and the woman said to me, oh, I don't really, she doesn't really have a blue blanket. And so then I went back to the animal and I said, well, you know, well, what kind of, what blanket it, is it? What does it look like? And she's like a red plaid. And so then I said to her, red plaid. But then I had to think to myself, okay, like, where did I get blue from? And then I realized that my cats at the time had a blue blanket that was by their window. And so then I placed blue to it. And that was just uh, my association. Okay. Totally, totally. Does that make sense? So we're like, but some animal communicators will be like the animal will be sending them that red plaid blanket and that's what they'll see right away is the red okay. plaid blanket. And I think you, you, the when so, I, I've been yeah. reading your book and I love it, uh, Voices of the Animals, I'm holding it up for your, uh, you yeah. if you're a listener oh. and not uh, on the video watching. This book has been so profound and beautiful for me. I just you know, it brought me to tears in multiple places. And one thing that was profound for me that I did not realize, and I'd love for you to talk more about this, Laura, is how you can project through imagery to your pet what you're trying to explain to them. We are going to go to the vet, mm -hmm. and it's only a normal checkup. There's nothing to be worried about. I know you don't like the vet uh, or the smells mm -hmm. and so forth. I know it freaks you out, and it's going to be okay because this is just a checkup. Just saying those words is better than nothing. Definitely better than nothing. Right. But to project through visuals, like imagine For... the 
dog or a cat that you're taking to the vet, arriving at the vet, calm, opening the 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 the, the, cur- the carrier out and carefully placing the the pet on the the cold steel, but it's okay, you know, and like you're petting it, and then the doctor, the the vet comes, mm-hmm. and it's all okay, and and then back into the carrier and back into the car and home and treats and all this sort of stuff, and you just have these visual pictures that you're broadcasting to your pet while you're narrating and explaining what's happening is a whole other level and they pick that up and I did not know that until I read your book oh yeah I mean I try and think about whenever I'm talking to animal or people like how can you be have the clearest communication and so then that does entail the pictures and also embodying those feelings in your body. So like when you're, like you said, when you're saying, okay, we're going to open up the carrier and everything's going to be fine, you're picturing and feeling your body feeling fine as well and that animal's body uh, feeling uh. fine. It's very, very important to do. And really, if you can think when you're talking to your animal that knowledge is power. So if you can explain as much as you can to your animal, it's extremely helpful for them. So especially when going to the vet, like I tell them, you know, this thing that goes up your butt is is tells the temperature in your body. That cold thing that goes up against your chest is listening to your heart rate and your lungs. And they're palpating your abdomen because they're seeing if you have a tumor and you just go through the whole thing that a vet can do and that helps them to to sort of know what's happening some people will try and hide what they're doing with their animal like shh, don't tell them we're going to the vet but i don't think that's helpful because the animal then knows like wait something's up like i'm not this is not supposed to be okay and so much of the way you feel um about the situation affects the animals so so many people are so worried about going to the vet like oh this is going to be so traumatic for them but my animals know like that the vet is someone who helps you i mean that's somebody who's gonna help you heal if something goes wrong and 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 the vets are there to their their inner being wants to help the animal and that's really important for the animal to understand too that these people are doing this because they care about animals so the more you can say the better and the more you can feel good about it it's not a big deal when my guys go to the vet and like even during covid and you have to drop them off at the vet i say to them you know when you go in there you know you just lick and blink your eyes and yawn so that's the animals calming signals that's how they calm themselves but then I say to them you tell all the other animals in there what you already know and you give them a job to do while they're in the vet so that if they see another animal that's really scared and shaking they can say oh wait I know I I know something that can help you you know blink and lick and you're here to get better and and then the animals come back and they tell you stories about what the animal other animals said and and the animals that, that so they cool. met in the and, hospital and it's kind of neat if somebody is not really aware of how no. this all works and they try and sneak up on their animal or surprise them with a, a vet visit without telling them and, and and then they're wondering where did that cat go i can't find her anywhere she went and hid how does she know of course she knows because you've been broadcasting that telepathically uh, to her and she's gone and hid she doesn't want to go to the vet and she she knows what you're up to so having uh that that clear and honest communication channel open with your pet so so important i think that's that's really beautiful and and in line with that there's this thing called the pill pocket that you can get from greenies and hide a pill in there and that feels very wrong yeah. now that I've read your book like right. that feels uh like you're breaking trust it does doesn't it so can I you, know, can I you feel the... talk more about that yeah yeah I want my animals know when they're getting medication because medication can make them feel funny right so like it can hurt their stomach it can make them feel dizzy and I want to know if something's going on with them after they take that meds so like what I usually say is, you know, I'm giving them a medication and I know something like an antibiotic, like maybe it's going to hurt your stomach. I'll give them that medication, whether it's in the pill pocket, it's fine if that helps them eat it. But I'll say, I'm giving you this medication. It might hurt your stomach, but that's normal. 
you know, but if like something's really, really bothering you and you feel like it's really bad, I want to know about it. So if you're dizzy, kind of walk around and look like you're dizzy or um, if your stomach hurts, lick or scratch at your stomach, you know, make it really, really obvious that something's going on with you. I mean, my guys can come over and say, like, poke at me and be like, hey, my stomach hurts. But sometimes on, like, busy days when I'm working, you know, and I'm focused on something else, like, I'll need them to be showing something with their body as well. And I feel like if we tell our animals to do that, our animals are going to find many ways to communicate with us. And it's interesting about what you were saying about how, like, we're broadcasting all the time. It's true, the animals are always picking up what we're thinking and feeling. But it goes the other way, too. It's like we're consciously picking, we're conscious, we're, we're often picking up what they're saying, too, to us. And sometimes we're thinking it's our own intuition. So, like, our animal might be saying, like, like I have a stomach ache, I have a stomach ache. And then you're kind of thinking, like, oh, some people will even, like, think they, they, their own stomach will have a stomach ache they'll be like oh I got a stomach ache but it's really not theirs it's their animals um, so that's why it's really important if something inside of your body um, or in your mind changes right away to really take a look at it and to stop and be like wait where did that come from is that mine or is that someone else's is that you know my husband's or my partner's or is that my animals it could be anybody's but the animals will try to send it to you yeah. And when I'm on the phone with a client, it's really interesting. Sometimes I'll be talking to the animal about like if they have any pain in their body and then like all of a sudden like my shoulder or something will hurt and or like my fingers will cramp up and I could easily think like, oh, it's because I've been typing all day or oh, because I've been leaning over, you know, the, the desk a certain way. Um, but really what's happening is that the animal is sending it to me and they, sometimes they send things so quickly. I'll get some things in words and then some things in my body. And so then I have to stop and I have to say, hey, do you, you know, do you have pain in your yeah, car? That is do you a have pain very in your shoulder? And just check in with them. Or, or like a, and that's uh, a good thing that people can do. If you're getting do. an intuitive hit or you're receiving something that you're not sure about, always check in on it and ask for confirmation. That's something I just recently learned this year as you're, as you're mm -hmm. uh, gaining more ability to receive this sort of stuff telepathically, whether it's from, uh, from people or, or, or pets, mm -hmm. that check in. Check in and get ask for confirmation. Same thing with uh, if you're starting to get an intuitive hit and you think it's from uh, from your guides or your angels, and you're like, okay, is that what you told me, or is am I am I getting that wrong? Yeah. It is really important, and it's a step that uh, you got to train in yourself. I think it is, and it takes a lot of training because you have to train yourself also to know yourself. So you have to know like what are you thinking at any given moment, and how does your body feel at every any given moment because otherwise you might not even notice if something else comes in yeah, yeah. yeah. now what do you think of uh these these different uh animal trainers who kind of rule with an iron fist or they they have a uh a whole approach that is about showing the animal who's boss and uh, you know displaying dominance and all this sort of stuff and I'm not going to name who I'm thinking of but I think you know who I'm talking about the the guy yeah. that's on TV a lot I, for uh, have, training dogs it, yeah I have mixed emotions about um, trainers like that uh, a lot of times they miss the praise they're not praising enough and um, they're, they're missing that sometimes an animal might be aggressive because pain in their body. So they're not, they're, they're not always seeing the animal as a whole. And they are, many of them are doing things that I would call abusive to animals and disrespectful. But on the other side of it, that we can learn a lot from them because dogs are dogs. And, and we can't forget that they also have their own language and their own way of doing things. And I would be wrong to say that um, I'm going to change 
like a German Shepherds or cattle dogs or some really sort of high drive dogs behavior just by talking to them, which very well can happen. Don't get me wrong. It can totally happen and it has happened. But a lot of times you got to back it up with creating boundaries. And sometimes people are too light. And I, I do think that it, that teaching a dog that you mean business and that you're the alpha is an important thing. How you do that is we might disagree. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's okay to alpha roll a dog or to shock collar a dog or to do any of those things. But I do think it's okay to be stern with dogs. Mm. That makes total sense. So yeah. we can learn a lot from them, those trainers. Yeah, those trainers have a lot of knowledge. Um, but they do a lot of things I don't agree with also. Right. But a lot of people in my field um, or people who are attracted to my field, in my opinion, when they have a really sort of naughty dog that's caught, that's wreaking havoc in the home, they're too light on them. And they need to kind of, they need, they need more discipline, yeah. more boundaries. Yeah, structure. Like, like a like a, yeah. a, a kid a kid needs yeah. discipline not in the sense of dis discipline is actually teaching it's it's not scolding or reprimanding yes. or punishing it's giving them boundaries and yeah. structure so that they can rely on that and they have something to push against and know that it's going to stay strong yeah but if my dog does something naughty i will tell them no like that's yeah. not okay <laughs> yeah and one you know, I got a pack of five, so there can be some naughtiness going on. Yeah, right. Well, I, I remember a great story in your... So, in, but all it is is like a downstay yeah, or something. I remember in your book, you talked about your, your okay. dog that uh, was essentially trained to bite. And um, the, she lived in a, in a uh, above a gas station or something. And uh, this ended up being becoming oh, yes, your yes, dog. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, Lala, uh, right. Yeah, she was rewarded for biting. Because they thought <laughs> it was, was funny, right? The, the, she the, got oh, Here's a customer biting. who's uh, freaked out and oh, uh, I, like, hey, I just had my butt bitten yeah. by this, this dog. And then the, uh, it gets a baloney exactly. for, for doing it. We were it. in our like early... <laughs> We were in our late teens, early 20s at the time. And so like all those guys at the gas station, that's what they did. They thought it was hysterical. I mean, I didn't think it was hysterical, but it, it took some work to get her to to um, to get out of that behavior. But she was so smart, that dog. She she let it go. Yeah, she was. And, and she that's was how you ended up. She was such a neat dog. She like, was the essentially just reasoning with her. You didn't have to be super stern or anything. You just made it clear like this is not okay and here's why and she, uh, she it seems like she had a lot of wisdom yes she, she was one of those you could just she had so much wisdom she was one of those you just talk to and she's got it yeah there are some of those dogs that all you have to do is tell them like there I, there was this cattle dog once that was the mom had a toddler and a little baby and he was biting the toddler's calf which you know cattle dogs are known for like biting calves and uh, he was like biting kids in the neighborhood's calves and he was just wreaking havoc. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna be like a challenge. And I said to him, I spent like less than 15 minutes with him and I just told him like, you, you have a family, like you can't be doing this. You know, you have to be nice and friendly and let kids pet you. That dog never bit again. I mean, it was amazing. So some dogs, you just like say it once and they got it. Yeah. It's so That's beautiful. So, cool. and, so and, beautiful. Um, I, I want to share yeah. a, a story with you. I would love for your <laughs> uh, your thoughts on it. At the time, this was not very long ago. This was after a big spiritual awakening I had in January this year. Uh, it was a couple months later. I just learned how to open my own Akashic Records and ask uh, for guidance. And so that was uh, huge for me because oh. I'd been getting Akashic Records readings from Anne Marie Pizarro for a few years, and th that's always been great. I, I really uh, rate her highly. She's she's been a guest on this uh, podcast, but it was yeah. a whole other level for me to learn how to open my own records myself. Because at a moment's notice, I could just open my records and ask for guidance yeah. from the records keepers, like, "What do I do?" And here's the specific situation I want to share with you. There was a stray cat that we would feed. I bring. Uh, you know, can of wet food uh, to this 
um, network chiropractor that we would uh, go to on a weekly basis, uh, me, my wife, and, and our, our little one. And while my, my wife was getting her entrainment, I'd take um, my little toddler outside to visit the cat, the stray cat across the street. This was in Tel Aviv, and there are a lot of stray cats there. And um, this yeah. one week in April, she was off. There was something wrong with her, and I, I couldn't understand what it was. She, she looked uh, mm -hmm. not well, but I didn't know if something was uh, injured or if uh, she had a disease, mm -hmm. you know, if she was uh, going through cancer or what. So I op opened my records and I asked for guidance and I was told mm. to, uh, to take her to the vet. And huh. I did. I'd never taken any animal other than my own pet to the vet, the vet uh -huh. before. So that was a, a little stretch uh, from out, outside of my comfort zone. But I was, she willingly got in. Yes, yeah, so did uh, you have to trap her? I mean, she kind of fought a little bit of not getting inside the carrier, but oh. uh, she let me put my hands around her and, and kind of push her in and stuff. And yeah, um, yeah, it was, Aww. it was important that I did so because she would have died. Uh, it turns out she had a pelvic fracture, a dislocated foot, and, and she yeah. was uh, severely dehydrated because it was so painful to move. She wouldn't go to the water oh that was just gosh. a few feet away, but down uh, several stoops. Aww. And so, yeah, that saved her life. And I, needed yeah. my records keepers to guide me on what to do it sounds like i n knowing what i know now from reading your book that i could have gotten her to communicate directly to me telepathically if i if i knew that i could have received like oh you you've got something wrong with your pelvis okay uh broken pelvis okay i'll i'll i'll, I'll take care of you here i'm going to come back in 10 minutes or whatever with a carrier and I'm going to take you to a vet and we'll get you fixed up. But I didn't have yeah. that distinction or that knowledge yet. So I just t tuned into my record keepers. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on all this. Yeah. So I am kind of curious if she knew how much you and your family cared about her. And then when you saw her that day, she was telling you like, I need help. And then you were picking it up. You're like, Oh, I feel like she needs help. And then in order to get that confirmation, you checked in, you know, with your record keepers, but maybe you already knew it because well, she was a, telling you. That's a good you. point. And then maybe that's why she was easier to kind of pick, pick up and get in the carrier too, is because she knew you were, yeah, you that, were helping that her. That's all probably very true because you know? she was not, uh, hardly walking. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so she was kind of hiding behind this, uh, this little uh, fire um, hydrant. And yeah, so there was definitely something wrong. And I'm Aww. sure she was broadcasting that to me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And then I got guidance from my. Yeah, and it might have been just to you because she trusted you, well, you know, like that she didn't do it to someone else, that she did that, it to, to you. Yeah. Like she chose well, I, you. So this this might sound a little out yeah. there for some of our listeners, but in a in a later Akashic Records reading <laughs> where I, I got a reading uh, from Anne and asked about uh, the cat or maybe it was um, maybe it was a medium. I can't, I can't get it straight uh, now because I, I see so many different uh, folks. But yeah, yeah the, the thing I learned was that this cat, her name was Curious. She was a pet of mine in a past life, and she incarnated in this life in order to give oh me this gosh. opportunity to grow <laughs> spiritually and um, to save her life because that oh. was definitely outside of my comfort zone. Like just a few months earlier, I'm embarrassed to say that oh, I just wow. left a, um, a hurt a hedgehog without picking it up and taking it to the vet. There, were, there was a small crowd of people kind of looking at it, poking at it. And then there's two guys picked up uh, the hedgehog with some sticks and then put mm. it into the grass uh, instead of on the on the bike path. Mm. Might have gotten hit by a, a bike or something. And I just prayed for it. You know, I was there with my little uh, baby and we, were, we had a stroller and everything. And it oh. was, uh, I don't know, a Sunday evening or yeah. something like that where 
vets wouldn't normally be open. So I had all these justifications for, okay, I'm just going to pray for that little thing and then walk away. And then I told my wife about it when I got home and she's like, you didn't pick them up and take them to the vet. I like, she was really (laughs) disappointed in me and like, ouch, you know, like that, that really stung because Uh, I knew that I should, at at that point I knew I should have, uh, should have done better than that. So when I had this new opportunity with this cat, I I wanted to do the right thing. And I was already primed from that previous experience a couple months earlier. And uh, so I'm like, okay, I got this new skill. I know it opened my records. I'm going to do it and I'm going to ask for guidance. What do I do? And I think that was spirit giving you that opportunity to to heal that hedgehog experience. You know, and I, I was always taught to meet people where they're at. And at that time, you know, you that was a wild animal. Like maybe you didn't feel that comfortable picking up the hedgehog. You don't know if it was gonna bite you. I mean, you didn't know, right, about the hedgehog. So um, although it would have been nice if you picked him up, but praying is really beautiful too, because sometimes when you pray like that, then who knows, maybe the next person came, like those prayers opened up a door for the next person to come and take that hedgehog to the vet, you know? So I think, don't be too hard on yourself. You were just kind of acting as the person you are at that time. And then, then you were willing to grow and then spirit gave you that opportunity to, to help the kitty, which is really beautiful. It's like you're living if you're passing it forward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like a living amends. Yeah, to the hedgehog. And, and, and a re- but prayers are really powerful. Yes, and one thing, one distinction yeah. I learned, or one um, really important point I learned this year, is that every prayer is heard. And that never occurred to me before. Mm. I just thought, I that, okay, that. so some prayers, uh, they don't get answered. And I didn't really go any further with it than that, you know? And then I, it was just like a download. It wasn't somebody telling me this, but I just, it was a download from, from above that every single prayer is heard, including every thought. Every thought is heard too. So I cleaned up my thinking. I'll tell you, (laughs) once I realized that there are no private thoughts, (laughs) I'm like, okay, this is, uh, uh, I'm not going to broadcast anything. (laughs) Right. And that your thoughts create your reality. That's like a big one. You're like, oh, gosh, what am I creating now? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It makes you really well, think. And then I learned from my Kabbalah teacher yeah. that you create powerful angels by having purity of thought, word and deed all all congruent. And I thought, oh, that's good. I want that. Oh, wow. I want to create really powerful, positive. So you create yes. the angels or do they just drawn you to create, you more? We, we are more powerful than yeah. we can possibly imagine. And um, yeah. so, no, yeah, that. we create angels with our thoughts, words, and deeds. And you can create mischievous angels. I learned this also from Kabbalah wow. that, that lie to us and, <laughs> and trick us if we have a, let's say, a malevolent or less than pure um, intention and we f- do something that on the outward appearance mm. looks really nice and and generous and and thoughtful but on the inside we did mm. it with you know not the purest of intentions or purest of thoughts that creates some really mischievous angels yeah mm. that, that then can trick us to do stuff that mm. you know, i can we'll, see that we'll regret later i feel like self-worth can do that too like if you don't have enough boundaries in your life and like low self-worth that could bring in something a little bit devious to kind of steer you the wrong way yeah and if you have higher self-worth you'll you won't look at it or you'll ignore it more rise above it more i think Mm. people get strayed that way Yeah. yeah just by their by how they feel about themselves yeah now one thing i want to uh ask you about is this concept of remote viewing because I'm just learning about mm. it from uh, a course I'm taking mm. uh, taught by Sheila Gillette and she's, she channels uh, 12 archangels that go by the uh, name of Theo collectively. 
Uh, she was a podcast guest uh, last year. Amazing, amazing woman. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm learning about remote viewing and these other modalities or uh, ways of receiving guidance. And remote viewing yeah. is, is particularly a, of interest to me in relation to pets and animals. Like, okay, so there's this cat mm -hmm. who, uh, through my Akashic records, opening my own records, I heard the word curious as the answer to the, uh -huh. what's her name? And I, I <laughs> doubted myself. I'll tell you, like, did I just imagine that? Did I just totally make that up? And then yeah. I was on a call. But you know it was yeah, different. Well, it was early stages of this, and so I was not, I was pretty unsure of myself. Yeah. So as I progressed through my trainings and the workshops and the reading and stuff that I'm doing, I'm becoming more mm -hmm. sure of myself. But at that time, it was still early days, and like I was doubting myself. I don't know that that was actually her name. That sounds really weird. Curious the cat. Um, so I'm on a <laughs> uh, one of Sheila Gillette's uh, trainings on Zoom, and I don't even ask the question on chat. Like I don't, I don't raise my hand on Zoom. I don't like. I'm just thinking the thing. Like, yeah. I would love to know if this is really her name. Is it really curious? And the uh, the funniest Aww. thing happened. So Theo was channeling, uh, was being channeled through Sheila at that time. She was, or they were answering questions. And the next sentence, the very next sentence, just after I think this thought, the word curious is in the sentence. Oh, wow. That was really cool. Yes. Yeah, so that, that, that was my really confirmation. Cool. That was my answer. Well, I didn't need to ask it, like type it into the chat. I just need to think it. It's so cool. Right, right. And then spirit gave you the validation that that's what it is. Yeah. 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 That is so neat. That's not, I don't think of that as remote viewing. Oh, right, right, right. Though, so let me, you? let me get to the point around remote viewing. So I would love yeah. to be able to, to kind of look in on curious, if, uh, you know, and I'm going to say not if that's her name, oh, since right. that's her name, since uh -huh. that's her name, I'm going to yeah. kind of remote view into her world right now because huh. she's half a world away in Israel. I'm in Miami. Oh, and wow. we had uh, this was right before we left uh, Israel in late April that uh, we yeah. know, had this this whole thing, this this situation with with her. And so I didn't have the ability to bring her with us to uh, the U.S. Uh, that that was not in the cards. So, and she needed a month of cage rest. So we, my wife was very, very, very helpful in oh, finding right. uh, someone to take. Uh, take her in to re rehabilitate Aww. her. We had to pay for it, of course, but yeah. You know, so that that was yeah, right. that was great. And now she's half a world away, and I'm really hoping everything is is going well for her. But I can't go and like drive for 20 minutes and check on her like I w and would have been able to if we're still in. Yeah. Television. And so is she with a person, or what's or is she back where you found her? Where so is she? I think she's still with that person. Um, but okay. after four months, we said, well, we're, you know, we were only going to do this for a month. It's it, $600 yeah. a month is a lot of money oh. to pay for somebody who already has seven or eight cats in the house to take one more in. Yeah. Surprised she's not doing it for yeah. free. So anyways, $600 a month, four months yeah. later, and we're like, okay, we can't do this anymore. This is like, <laughs> this is, this just isn't workable. So yeah. uh, we were trying to find a yeah. permanent home for her and nothing came through. We posted multiple times oh, to nice. Facebook and so forth. And so we were telling the lady that had uh, taken the cat in for 600 a month, my sister-in-law is going to come and pick yeah. up the cat. We're going to stop paying you. And she's going to go back to her home on the street, yeah. the same place that she'd been living. I checked, I, I checked with my guides on this. It was yeah. okay. Yeah, like that's like she was getting yeah. stir crazy okay. staying in that house with the lady and she wanted to go back. Um, I, I really wanted her to have a, a yeah. forever home, but you know, it didn't end up coming to. Yeah. So is somebody okay, so feeding her? Here's where her? the remote coming, uh, remote is viewing somebody feeding comes her? in because I don't know what's happening okay. now. When we told her that my sister-in-law is coming to pick her up to take her she got really upset and she started giving us massive guilt trips and said she's going to die on the street and all this sort of stuff 
but I was told, uh, uh. my guidance was that uh, this is a cash cat. <laughs> For her, this is cash cat. Uh, and not curious the cat, but cash cat. And, mm. and uh, so this is why she oh. was really putting up a fuss about it. She wanted that 600 a month uh, to continue. Or she might have just felt like who's going to feed her, right? I mean, she probably wanted oh, the well, 600 a month too, but she well might have just... She was well fed and there was water. <laughs> always, every time I stopped to feed her the wet food, she always had uh, a, a big box of, of dry stuff. food and a, a thing of water there. Oh, I got you. Somebody was taking, yeah, care, was taking of, care of, of, of her uh, as yeah. a street cat. Yeah. And yet, I what really What did she look like? Do you want us home. to get her? Yeah, I would yeah. love that. Yeah, so do you want me to get her? You want me to... So what does she look like? What does she... Um, she's uh, black and and brownish. Um, uh, you know what? If you give me a moment, I'm just... I'll grab my phone and I'll, I have a picture of her. So... Oh my God, I would okay, love okay, to see a picture that. of her. Here she is. So just while you're doing that, so like... I can kind of see her. I can't see her little face. Can you blow up her little face? Oh, yeah, now I can. Oh, my God, she's little, huh? Yeah, not, not Is she a little girl? Little. Here's a picture of her before she got hurt. No, that's my looks... little one. Oh, now she looks ginormous. Oh, that's your yeah, little yeah. boy. That's why I was like, or your little, boy. little yeah. boy or girl. Oh, yeah, she's way bigger, yeah, than I thought she was. Yeah, she's cute. Oh, my God. Look at You should I, ship her to I you. I wanted to. Are you going to stay where you to, are? I got a big no from my wife. You should. Look <laughs> how good she is with your child. I got a big no from my wife. <laughs> yeah. It's a like, no from your wife. Oh, my God. Yeah. That surprises me. No, it's, it makes sense <laughs> because, uh, yeah, we've... Um, there, there are reasons. Uh, she's allergic to cats, for one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's personal. Um, um, okay, let me get yeah. her. Curious, right? Hold on. Oh. Oh, she says that every day she checks in with her heart and she feels you all. She says she wants to say thank you to you guys. She okay. says she's pretty spry now. I think she knows this, but tell her I love her very much. She's well, first. She said that her hip sort of clicks a little bit, like the 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 left the left rear kind of like clicks out. Maybe your chiropractor can go adjust her because <laughs> she's outside of the chiropractic office, right? Well, because of the cat sitter slash uh, rehab person didn't like that. Oh, yeah. She didn't go back. Yeah. There. So she she kind of yeah. ghosted us after we said, well, we're not we're going to we're going to oh, pick right, her so up, put back her back there. in the street. And so she now she doesn't answer text messages. <laughs> So oh. is she still there with uh, in in that house? She says yes, and she says she has like a patio she can go out okay. onto. She gets to roll around in okay. the dirt. She said that when you looked at her in the eyes, she felt like she knew you from long ago. She also said that you were very clear with talking to her. She said that you would like stare at her and talk to her and she knew exactly okay. what you were saying. She gives me she gives me this feeling that you guys would sort of gaze at each other. Yeah. Did you do that with her oh, yeah. in her eyes? <laughs> like she's giving me like the way you would look at her and she would kind of look back at you. It was like a really yep. touching moments. Yeah, it's like I could see into her soul. 
Yeah, that's when she felt the same about you. She says, and she likes it where she is. And she has a pillow she really likes. Yeah. Oh. Oh. She said that your baby had like magic hands and when they would go kind of over her hips, it would kind of like tingle. Mm. How old is your kid now? He turns two in a few weeks. Do you, do you think he's a healer? Does he see it? Does he look like a little healer? Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's very special. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you have to see like, cause she said his hands. So you'll have to see like, if does he place his hands on like mm. boo-boos or something, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so cute. She's, she wants to know if I can tell you something else. Yeah. Oh. She says sometimes she misses the old days of seeing you because you were like clockwork. <laughs> so I don't know. What yeah, the... we'd always come the same time <laughs> to our appointment to the <laughs> chiropractor across the street. Oh, so I think still at that time, she like thinks of you. Mm. That's so cute. Yeah, here's another picture Aww. of uh, my little one with, uh, with Curious. Oh my gosh. That is actually really special because not all cats are good with little toddlers. And a stray special. cat, a stray cat. Yeah. yeah. So cool. She's, she said that she's had nice people in her life. A lot of people that cared about me. She says about your family is that you were like the happiest, like the joyous of hearts. That's cute. Aww. Like she gives me the impression that your hearts are peaceful. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I think that's a great compliment coming mm. from an animal. They think your heart is peaceful. Yeah. <laughs> People by nature are so mm. worried. Yeah, it's, well, there are no coincidences yeah. that uh, you know, thing, timings and everything is all divine. I just got a reading from, uh, yeah. from, uh, from uh, Katie Beecher, who is phenomenal. She, I'm going to have her as a guest on this podcast. Oh. Uh, she's a medical intuitive. and she paints as well as writes up a report oh, and then uh, does a reading to go over it. And she, she drew uh -huh. a heart in the center, like the, the heart center, right? So the, the energy center, she drew a huge picture of a heart yeah. there. And, um, you know, she was just an hour ago explaining like what a huge heart I have. So that's really cool. Oh my God, no yeah. way. So then you hear it twice. Oh, that's so neat. I love that. <laughs> How sweet. Aww. That's neat. And so when you think about Curious or any other animal, you can think of it as remote viewing, but you can also think about it as like going internally to her, like go into your heart. And then from hit, from there, just thinking about her, you don't have to necessarily, like I think of remote viewing as like you projecting your spirit to that location and then actually like seeing her physical body and like what she's doing. But that you, and that's very beneficial, but you could also, especially since you're so heart centered, go into your heart and then from there receive from her or like send your heart to her it's a little bit different i don't think you need much heart to remote view if that makes sense yeah so just go into your heart and think of like a little doorway there or like that's like the place where you can connect with her and just think of her and imagine being with her and then just talk to her and be open to receiving and see if you get anything mm -hmm. back. Where I think of remote viewing as more projecting ourselves somewhere, you know what I mean? And seeing, like seeing the physical surroundings. Got it. Where communication, you can just feel it. You don't have to 
you don't have to necessarily see it. Right. So I could I could have a Does communication that make sense? Like with, with telepathy her just by getting into my heart center and then bringing up let's mm -hmm. say an image or a memory of her and then I mm -hmm. can just listen to mm -hmm. what my heart says, the kind of the vibrations, the things I'm feeling or the words mm -hmm. that uh, I hear in my own kind of inner mm -hmm. voice, and that's curious speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Th this yeah. is so cool, and I yeah, really, and really appreciate about, like, you connecting yeah. uh, with uh, curious and sh sharing this and doing this on uh, on the Aww. podcast. It's really meaningful for me, and I'm sure that my my listener is getting so much out of this too that. Uh, you know, th this is really, really special. So, thank and and you have such an incredible gift. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> it's very special what you do too. Yeah, I've really enjoyed you know listening to the way you feel and the way you navigate the world and and your spiritual growth. It's really, it's 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 one to grow on, you know, for other people, oh, for sure. Thank you so much. And I, I'm yeah. honored that you uh, took the time out to yeah. listen to some of the episodes of, of, of this show. That's really, I, I know. I, oh, of course. Are you kidding oh, me? They're you. great. Thank yeah, I'm going to be listening to every one. Wow, They're awesome. That, that means a lot. That yeah. Means a lot. I think what's really neat is that you connect with people on a really heart, heartful place. And, and, I can tell that the people who you talk to, they drop their ego. I just have noticed that. Or maybe they don't even have ego, the people you talk to. But I've just sort of been really astounded with those communications. They, they're just really real. And they're, they're wonderful to tune into and spend part of my day doing. Oh, so thank I you. thank you for thank that. Thank you so much. And, yeah. you know, I, I used to yeah. kind of malign <laughs> my ego or not really... I don't know. I'd want to minimize it or, or 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 get rid of it or whatever. But then I realized that no, this is actually something that we are gifted with. So we have contrast, something to push against, and not to see it as mm -hmm. as something negative, but as see it as a blessing and uh, something to you know work towards yeah. um, uh, putting it in a place that is only used for growth and not for anything malevolent or, or not mm -hmm. helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So yeah. how does our, our listener or viewer, uh, work with you, get, uh, uh, connected to their, uh, pet, uh, th that maybe they've, uh, lost and, and, uh, have you, connect them up with with that pet and and share some of that pet's wisdom with them or if they're dealing with a, a, a pet that's currently living with them and they're not uh, able to mm -hmm. control it or whatever it's behaving uh, yeah. in a naughty way like how 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 do you work and how do they get in touch and all that so they can go to my website which is thepetpsychic.com and on there, they can look at my schedule and book a session and pay. And then once they book their time, uh, they get an email with uh, like a little homework they have to do. They have to fill out a form and upload a picture of their animal or their deceased loved one. Um, and then I just call them at their appointment time and we do a phone consultation. And you can also buy my CD, my meditation CD for death and dying on there and buy my books on there or be redirected to Amazon to buy my books and Amazon. The books are great too because it can help you learn how to talk to the animals yeah. as well. I, I'm so yeah. enjoying Voices of the Animals. I've already said this once, but I got to plug it again. I'm almost done with it. I'm into page Thank 166, you. 167. Uh, so <laughs> only maybe uh, 20% left, 25% left to go. So I'll be finishing that pretty soon. I loved it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I can't I can't thank you enough for joining me today and sharing your your gift, your brilliance, your your uh, light with my listeners. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you, listener. 
I, I think this is such an amazing opportunity to deepen our relationships with our animals, whether they're here in this plane or they're in the spirit plane. So do something more than just listen with an open heart. Take some positive, powerful action. Do something with this information. We'll catch you on the next episode. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, signing off.